on your Alexa powered smart speaker and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. This is Chicago's Morning Answer. Merry Christmas. On AM 560. Ho, ho, ho. The Answer. Welcome back on the eve of Christmas Eve. Amy Jacobson here. Paul Vallis filling in for Dan Prof. Thank you so much for coming. And Thanks for having got me. got some new information we're going to share doing the show. Remember, don't forget at 838, it's open mic Thursday. Mm-hmm. Normally open mic Friday, but since this is the last show of 2021, we want to hear what your New Year's resolutions are and all that. But now we welcome to the program returning guest, Attorney Gloria Rodriguez. She represented the Asandario brothers. And first of all, congratulations on your victory, and thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much, Amy. It's great to be back, and uh, we really appreciate um, you guys being there for us, supporting us, and, uh, you know, it's it's nice to be able to close this chapter in their lives yeah, so, uh, and just move forward. Yeah, so we'll first start. How are your clients doing? I mean, do they feel obviously vindicated, but are they doing well? They are. They they do feel vindicated. Um, they're, they're very thrilled with the result. They were very satisfied that the jurors, you know, took the time. Uh, You know, they deliberated for nine hours. Um, They came back with the result they did, uh, five guilties out of six counts. And they're still very remorseful, and they, you know, they still feel really bad for their role in this. Uh, But they're glad it's over. Can they get hired? I mean, have they had any luck with employment? No. I mean, they've just been completely what's the word, blacklisted from the industry. Um, Bola has had to restructure his life. And thankfully, um, within days of the verdict, he actually had to fight for the national championship with USA Boxing. So he is the number one ranked amateur boxer in his weight class of 189. Um, The older brother, Ola, he had started his own home renovation business. And thankfully, that's, that's what's been paying the bills. Okay. Now, uh, during, right after the trial and the verdict was rendered, you had thanked Judge Sheila O'Brien. And just reiterate for us why you were being so gracious toward her. Well, Judge O'Brien, if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't, we would have never had a trial uh, and the story because it was her motion. If you remember, she's the one who asked for the court to appoint a special prosecutor. And I had the privilege of speaking with her uh, a few times, actually, in person uh, at the courthouse. And she said, Gloria, it, th- this just never sat right with me. The public never knew what happened. So she, you know, she, she took it upon herself to file that motion. And thank goodness it did, because the chain reaction of that led us to Dan Webb and led us to having this trial. Now, uh, Dan Webb, obviously, that 60-page report, was released, I believe it was two days ago. All the days are running together when you get close to the Christmas break. But did you, uh, were you able to read the report? I mean, I saw some of the highlights of it saying that, you know, Kim Fox said there are 5,700 other cases like this when there weren't. She also said that Jesse Smollett didn't have any priors, and he did. He had a DUI conviction in 2007 where he told police, he gave police his brother's information. So clearly there's a pattern of him not respecting authority. Right. I did read the report. Um, it was long awaited. I don't know if, if you um, if you remember this, but Dan had asked for that report to be released early on. And so Judge Tooman had only allowed a summary of that report to be released. But as soon as the verdict was done, uh, he told me, I'm going to make sure that that uh, sees the light of day. And so I'm, I'm glad that he filed that motion and the judge allowed it. And I think once your your audience, if, if they want to go ahead and, and, and read that report, they're going to see a lot of fabrications that Kim Fox's office, uh, you know, she did a complete reversal with no no reason, to no good reason to do it. Yeah, you know, I just want to say that uh, even with his report, I thought his, I thought he's, he still kind of quasi left her off the hook. Yeah, I mean, he, right. I'm, right, he didn't go for that killer statement. The bottom line is, she she fabricated. She lied. He well, got who pre- got to her. He got preferential treatment, and so at the end of the day, you know, they he went as far as I think he was politically prepared to go. But I'll tell you, it's appalling that they would have. How many? I mean, how many police officers did they have on this? They talked about 
26 detectives working these cases. And Overtime. what was it 3,100 hours or 31,000 hours? I don't remember. But I mean, you know, they got a murder clearance rate this year. Murders committed this year of 20 percent. And they're spending millions of dollars chasing Smollett. I mean, first of all, I think I mean, clearly this guy was guilty from day one. Fox didn't do her job. She should be held accountable. I mean, it was just absolutely outrageous. But when you consider that the the money and the resources and the public attention. Well, it gives public, Chicago another black eye. Yeah, exactly. It gives the, it, the city another black eye. But I remember the night, the night that that CTA bus driver was being pummeled. Smollett was all over the news. I mean, I had to post that picture before the mainstream media began to pick it up. So at the end of the day, I mean, it's just what, what what's next? Smollett, Smollett going to get his own talk show? I mean, I mean, really, when he really. Think I don't about know, Gloria, do you think his career is over? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy. You know, Paul, you, you said some real, real good points there. I mean, um, Dan Webb, you know, he had to really look at this through the lens of like if he was going to charge Kim Fox criminally. And at the end of the day, you know, you have to be able to sustain criminal charges if you bring them. So I do know that a referral was made to the bar uh, against Kim Fox mm. and the ARDC will have to address um, what they do with her license because she is a lawyer. Uh, she's still held to the same standard as all lawyers in the state. And then as far as Mr. Smollett goes, you know, he took the stand and that's his right as a defendant. But it's not his right to take the stand and mislead the jurors mm-hmm. or lie. He should be charged so, with perjury, don't right. you think? You know, I, I don't know that, that they want to open up a new case because it would be a new case if right. they charged him with perjury. But where you can get the remedy for someone doing that is at sentencing. And so, you know, Dan Webb and his team, they're going to continue being the special prosecutor all the way through. And at sentencing, I know that that's going to be an aggravating factor. I mean, that that's something that they can use to ask for jail time. Okay, when is sentencing, and what do you think Jesse Smollett is going to get? And what are the options? Well, well, January 27th is, it's like the status to set the status date. Okay. <laughs> um, what that means is they're going to, all the lawyers will, will get together, and the judge is going to look at a pre-sentencing report which is just like an investigation into uh, Mr. Smollett's background and what would be uh, an appropriate sentence. And then there's an opportunity for the defense counsel to submit mitigating factors, which I can't think of any. Um, And the the court, sorry, I mean, I guess they're going to say his lack of history, um, his, his, his involvement with the community and and his um, philanthropy, but I don't think that that's really going to carry weight when you consider he sat on, you know, in the witness box for eight hours and told a tall tale. So, you know, what is he looking at normally on this low level felony class four? He'd be looking at probation with his kind of record. But I, I, I genuinely believe that he's looking at maybe six months to a year. Really? Given what he did, yeah, and the lack of remorse, how does the court deter other people from doing this? Right. What do you want him? What do you think is fair? Oh, is what I want is for judge? him to, you know, I, I wish in this country we could we could get a little more creative with some of our remedies. Um, I, I know one uh, social media person told me, he should be forced to to stand in in uh, the middle of the daily center and apologize. <laughs> <laughs> right, but you he's know? so arrogant. I mean, he 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 lied to himself so much that he is actually believing the lie. And I couldn't believe how many of his family members believed the lie, and how many people that I know out in the community that still believe that lie. Right. You know what, um, Paul and Amy? Let me disclose this to you. There was a lady in the courtroom who actually handed a letter to Ola as the the, the verdict was read, and like she ran out, but she, it was a handwritten letter, and it said, "Please come clean. Please tell the world that the police made you do this." Yeah, of course. And Ola's reading it to me, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, "Listen, Ola." This lady also believes that the moon landing never happened and that the moon is made of cheese. Okay. 
So I was like, what is wrong with people? Well, <laughs> it, well if you remember, they part of the defense was they were trying to imply that somehow this was kind of like a police setup or. Yeah, and also, too, that it was a sexual relationship gone wrong. Yeah, I Bola said something different than Jesse Smollett. I'm I'm going to have to believe uh, your client. My only point is, if you're really going to hold people accountable, you need to hold Kim Fox accountable, first of all. Well, here's the thing. And you need to be aggressive about doing it. But I I just want to drive home the point. Uh, Just the enormous resources and the time and attention. I mean, it's a great diversion. that's why there's a civil lawsuit against him. He has to pay back the city, or they're asking for $130,000 $130,000 in overtime. But while they were spending all this time, all this time on this case that should have been a slam dunk, by the way, this isn't a, this isn't a great Dan Webb prosecution here. I mean, this should have been a slam dunk. Uh, there's all these murders. There's all these mass shootings. Uh, one arrest, 58 mass shootings in Chicago. And we've got 26 detectives working the, the Smollett case. Well, here's the main question for you, Gloria, and if you could help us out with this. What happened with Kim Fox saying, you know, we're charging him, we have the evidence. And then a few days later, she drops all charges against him. Unbeknownst to Mayor Emanuel, unbeknownst to Superintendent Eddie Johnson, what happened? Who got to her? I will tell you, we were just as surprised. And I had, I was in court when uh, Mr. Smollett was arraigned. So two weeks before they dropped the charges, the, the state's attorney uh, I, you know, it, it wasn't Kim, it wasn't Joseph Maggots, um, but she came to me and said, we're, we're moving forward. We're, we're, you know, let me know if your clients have any objection to media coverage in the courtroom. I mean, they let, Kim they, Fox she, said that she, to you? No, 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 her, no it was okay. her staff. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it was her staff. I don't want to mention her by name, no, it's okay. but, it, but she, she knows who she is. She came to us and she told us, we are going to prosecute this all the way. Let me know if your clients have any objection to media coverage. And so that was my last communication with Kim Fox's office. And all of a sudden, I, I'm packing for spring break on March 26th with my kids. And I see, you know, the circus on the, on the television and my phones, all of my phones are blowing up. And I'm like, what could be happening right now? And that's when we learned that the charges had been completely dropped. So, that's so there, why were, there was even O'Brien. talk. But there was there was even talk of media coverage, like coverage, live coverage from the courtroom on this. Yeah, there there was there was a victim advocate that was appointed to the brothers. You know, they were treating the brothers like like complaining witnesses. Mm-hmm. Um, they they weren't sure up to what point, how long this trial was going to take, but they assured us they, they were going to do it right. And boop, the charges were dropped with no notice. It was at an emergency hearing. You know, I've been practicing in Cook County and and doing general law for 10 years. Okay. I've never gotten a deal like that Hmm. where my client didn't have to say he was guilty and didn't have to, to do anything for such a sweetheart deal where they counted community service that he had done in the past or over the weekend it's never been done. And so that, that was one of the things, you know, Mr. Webb puts in his report there, (laughs) there aren't cases like that. This was clearly preferential treatment. Yep. And we don't know who got to her because those, I mean, I know that Tina chain, who is Michelle Obama's chief of staff, she had been texting with um, Kim Fox, but we never, they were redacted. So we never got to know exactly what was said. Mm -hmm. Which is right. a darn shame. Darn. So you guys fill in the blank. Yeah. All right, Gloria Rodriguez, uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Attorney, how can people get a hold of you if they want to inquire about you, about or if they need representing a, them? Yeah, <laughs> they, they need a good defense attorney. It's probably a long list now. You know, I, I always <laughs> say I do I do door law. Uh, it's my law firm. It's it's whatever has walked through my door in the last 10 years that where I can help a person, um, you know, even if you if you if you don't have money, um, but you have a skill, we can barter. <laughs> it's, it's, that, that's been my that's 